Good morning, folks. My name's James Watson. I'm the Level 3 Course Coordinator for the Fishery Management courses. I do also teach on Level 3, Level 2, and at higher education. Today, I'd like to show you around the Aquatic Research and Conservation Centre. So follow me and we'll take a look what's inside. As we first work, walk through the doors, we come to our ornamental koi pool. Okay? In here you'll find a variety of different koi and common carp. Very useful um, facility for our students that want to pursue a career in ornamental pool design. Some of our largest fish in here are in excess of 20 pounds. As we walk through these doors, we have two large aquaria. This particular tank has Malawi cichlids from Africa and very important area for us at the college because this is an area where um, industry like to come and film and test new products. This is a real benefit for us because our students are able to then see um, marketing and how social media is integrated into their chosen profession. At this point, the building splits into two halves. First, we have the Aquatics Hall, which is all the weird and wonderful, ugly and very pretty fish that people like to keep in their tanks and ponds. And the other side is the aquaculture hall. Now, aquaculture is more commonly known as fish farming. It's the production of fish for food. What's very important to us here at Sparshalt is that um, our students find out about the whole fish sector. So they develop the skills to work in sports fishery management, ornamental and aquatics, and aquaculture. And one thing you'll notice as we walk around here, there are species from all over the world in this particular building. Again, we don't just focus on typically British species because we want students to uh, develop skills so they can go and take jobs um, abroad. When looking after ornamental and aquatic species, the students really must find out about all the different equipment required to maintain superb water quality so these fish can thrive. Also, the students are heavily involved in aquascaping the tanks to replicate the fish's natural environment. Students will also be given the choice to set up breeding tanks to produce fry, which can be um, sold on to the um, aquatics retail trade. So again, the students have a lot of freedom in this particular side of the building to research and develop skills into fish that they find really interesting. Here we have a marine predator tank. We've got a dog-faced puffer fish, and also hidden down in the rocks there, waiting for its next meal, is a moor eel. And one of the most important things for students to learn in ornamental and aquatics is the difference between freshwater aquatics and marine aquatics. Now, we spend, invest a lot of time teaching students how to set up marine tanks correctly. Now, that just doesn't involve fish husbandry, but the students also need to learn how to propagate coral and anemones in order to aquascape their tanks so they really, really, truly um, resemble their natural environment. I'd now like to take you through into the aquaculture hall. As I said before, Aquaculture is another term for fish farming.
Our most important aquaculture species is carp. Okay? Um, carp is the number one warm water aquaculture species in the world today and more tons of carp are produced than any other species for the table market. However, in here they serve a bit of a treble function really because when our students learn how to breed, maintain the health and grow carp, they learn the skills to produce carp not just only for food, but they also learn to produce carp for the sports fishing industry. Carp are the number one sports fish in the UK today. And as we saw in the koi pool in the entrance, they're also a popular ornamental fish as well. So our students will learn how to grow carp. They will then have the skills for three different separate industries. They also have the skills to work all across the globe. We have many students now who have graduated um, on fish courses here at Sparshall. They now work, work in um, the Philippines, they work in China, they work in America um, the, and many places in Europe. Another popular aquaculture species in the world today is Clarius catfish otherwise known as African walking catfish. Now, Clarius catfish are a really, really good fish farming species. And the reason for that is because they're very, very tough and very hardy. Clarius catfish have not just gills, but they also have a basic lung structure in the top of their heads which means they can breathe out of water. They also have very strong pectoral fins, which means they can walk up to two kilometers a day. As a fish farmer, this enables us to keep them um, in very um, confined tanks without any detriment to their health. The second most important aquaculture species in the world today are tilapia. Now tilapia are quite often referred to as the aquatic chicken in the aquaculture industry. Mainly because they're easy to grow, okay? They um, can survive perfectly well in a wide variety of environments and they really, really are a very important food source. Now here at Sparsha we wouldn't be able to produce and rear all these different species if we didn't know how to reproduce. Now this is our spawning suite. Okay, at spawning time we will select some males, we'll select some females, we'll incubate them to the correct temperature and then we will inject the fish with hormones to induce ovulation. Once the fish are ready to ovulate, the students will strip the fish and place the eggs into these zuga jars. In these zuga jars, the eggs will be kept well aerated and incubated at the correct temperature before swimming to the top when they've hatched and accumulating in this tank here. Small fry that are produced in this spawning suite then come to the on-growing thesis room where they can be split into individual tanks and grown on to adult size. It's during this phase that um, it provides our higher education students with an excellent opportunity to try out new equipment, study behaviour and trial new feeds. So this really is at the forefront of our higher education research.
At that point, I'd now like you, for, like you to follow me to the SRTC, which is the Salmon and Trout Rearing Centre. We now find ourselves at the Salmonid Rearing and Trials Centre. So follow me, we're going to see some of the cold water species that we produce at Sparchol. In the Salmonid Rearing Centre, we produce rainbow trout for the table market and we also produce a small number of brown trout for the restocking market. Rainbow trout are very nice to eat and are purchased by customers at fishmongers and farmers markets. Brown trout are stocked into local rivers such as the Test and Itchin for the benefit of anglers who want to catch native fish. This facility is served by 50 cubic metres of water an hour, which is pumped up from the aquifers below where we stand. The water flows through the building. The eggs get the water first when it's at its best quality, and then the water cascades down through the facility to the broodstock. Here we have some rainbow broodstock and between the months of October and February these fish will be stripped for eggs and milk to produce the fry for the following year. The fish are ground in fiberglass tanks but also concrete raceways to repli replicate the typical holding units that students would find on fish farms. Here at Sparshot we grow fish from eggs through to market size but we also trial different diets for international feed companies. Sparshaw has been at the forefront of fish feed design for the last 20 years. So follow me and we'll go and see some of the tr trial tanks where new diets are being tested at the moment. Here we have our Salmonid trials tanks. It's here that we're able to test different diets that have been produced by global fish farming feed companies. If you come on here, here we see one meter tanks with fingerlings in here, which are fed different diets. These fish are then weighed every week and at the end of their trial their carcass quality is assessed. It's from the data generated from these trials that um, feed companies are then able to determine what is the best nutritional composition for fish feed diets. Here at Sparshot, we're very fortunate to have our own fishing lake, okay, which provides us with an excellent facility for our students to practice fishery management techniques. Um, this is a mixed course fishery, okay, it's stocked with bream, tench, carp, roach, perch, and rudd. Here the students will learn how to net, electrofish and carry out aquatic weed control and stock assessments. The added benefit with this lake is it also provides an excellent recreational facility for our students outside of lecture time.
many of the students from not just fish courses but across all the areas love to spend their spare time fishing here at the lake. This lake is a very, very unique asset as very few other training places in the country have a lake where they can practice key principle fishery management techniques on their doorstep. Okay, we're coming to the end of our tour now. Um, and I'd just like to focus on the fact that you've seen all the facilities we have here at Sparshall to train individuals to work in all three main areas of the fish sector. Our students that graduate here at Sparshall will typically go on to be fishery managers looking after the lakes, pond and river ecosystems such as this and also caring for their customers who are obviously the anglers. Some of our learners would work in ornamental and aquatics retail units like the one that we showed you earlier. Okay, selling ornamental fish to the public. Also, some of our learners will um, go on to careers in fish farming. So they could produce, be producing salmon and trout for the UK market, or they may choose to work abroad to produce carp, catfish or tilapia. Now, thank you very much for your time. I hope you've enjoyed your day. Don't forget, should you want to find out any more information about um, Sparshalt fish sector, please don't hesitate to get in touch. I've enjoyed talking to you today. Take care, goodbye.